Hello, hola. Happy belated Indigenous Peoples Day to you all. I actually think we should make every day Indigenous Peoples Day. I learned so much from you all yesterday that I just wanted to keep going. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Susan Handrigan, and I have the honor and privilege of being the president and CEO of Canada World Youth. Niyama Susan Handrigan. I am joining you today from Ziotika, otherwise known as Montreal. And it's situated on the traditional territory of the Kenya Kieka, a place which has long served as a site of meeting and exchange for many First Nations, including the Kenya Kieka of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, Huron, Wendat, Abenaki, and Anishinaabek. We recognize the Kenya Kieka as the traditional custodians of the lands and waters in which we gather today. The International Aboriginal Youth Internship is funded in part by Global Affairs Canada, and I'd like to recognize them for their presence here today and thank them for their contribution. The program has evolved significantly over the last four years, and we've learned very much from our local and overseas partners. And even this iteration, which is 100% virtual, we've had one partner that has participated every year, and that is La Brigada. Gracias por su valioso asociación. I would also like to thank all of you for organizing the International Forum. There are many things that we are healing and learning from here in Canada and also around the world. And when you decided to embark in this program, it was in a context of learning and sharing. And as, cults, as different cultures grown together to be better global citizens. It is forums like this one in collaboration with partners from around the world that we take another step forward. And for that, I congratulate you. C'est ici avec les qualités des jeunes comme ceux et celles qui participent dans ce programme, j'ai plus d'espoir que jamais dans l'avenir. Oh, that's that's a shame. Um, sorry about that. It seems that the video has stopped at the almost very end of this. Um, Tina, uh, do you have any, uh, should I continue to maybe um, share this another way? Do you want me to pull it up? Sorry. Um, yes, I think that would be helpful. I could I, I could try to just reload this. Um, yeah, bonjour, hello. Okay, I can share mine. I have it up on my screen, so I'll just kind of go towards the end and I'll share. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Ended right at the end. <laughs> En tant qu'organisation internationale, cette année est exclue particulièrement difficile pour nous. Ceci dit, avec les qualités des jeunes, comme ceux et celles qui participent dans ce programme, j'ai plus de fois que jamais dans la vie. You all make the future look very bright. I'm sorry I can't be with you in person, but I very much look forward to watching the video this weekend. Miigwech. Thank you. Merci. Et gracias à tous. Thank you, Tina. Thank you. Lovely. Um, and now we will uh, move on to the introduction of um, our other um, welcome work. <laughs> Yes, uh, hello, uh, well, and then we will start also with uh, the introduction of our president of the Brigada, Mr. Jorge Galeano. 
Eh, buenas tardes, vamos a comenzar también con las palabras de buenas tardes todos nuestro y presidente. Todas. Eh, para mí es un honor eh, estar en, esta, en este foro compartiendo las experiencias que hemos vivido y estamos viviendo ahora con esta época de pandemia, trabajando en las comunidades indígenas. Eh, voy a comenzar eh, dando un resumen de lo que significa para nosotros la relación y la cooperación con eh, Canada World Youth. Eh, nuestro trabajo comenzó en 2005, ¿no? con la cooperación entre Brigada y Juventud Canada Mundo, con los programas de intercambios bilaterales, participando jóvenes de diferentes regiones del Perú. En 2010 iniciamos programas con jóvenes líderes en acción, desarrollando la cooperación y la participación participación de jóvenes con acciones de voluntariado en diferentes comunidades del Perú. Dentro de este programa, Jóvenes Líderes en Acción, realizamos intercambios con jóvenes emprendedores, en este caso con Nicaragua, Canadá, Perú, una experiencia para jóvenes de compartir sus proyectos e iniciativas empresariales. Durante estos 16 años de cooperación con Juventud Canadá Mundo, Hemos realizado proyectos de intercambio como, por ejemplo, el programa de aprendizaje global, recibiendo a jóvenes estudiantes de diferentes escuelas del Canadá, el programa Quebec Sin Fronteras y eh, el programa de acogida de grupo de jóvenes indígenas canadienses que compartieron su cultura en diferentes comunidades del Perú. El 2018... Iniciamos el programa International Aborigen Youth Internship, acogiendo a jóvenes indígenas canadienses que vivieron en comunidades de los Andes. En la primera versión, esto, los jóvenes indígenas canadienses vivieron en Mato, que, es, que está ubicado en la región Ancash, en Orcotuna, que está ubicado en la región Junín. El 2019, en la segunda versión, los jóvenes eh, vivieron en Ancash, en la comunidad de Mato y Guaylas, y en Puno, en la comunidad de Lampa. Bueno, el 2021, debido a la pandemia, iniciamos una nueva experiencia del programa International Aboriginal Youth Internship, con la participación de jóvenes pasantes indígenas canadienses y peruanos. Una nueva experiencia para todos, con muchos retos, pero con buenos resultados. 15 proyectos en diferentes comunidades y en tres regiones naturales del Perú. La costa, la sierra y la selva. Desarrollando acciones e involucrando a las comunidades indígenas locales y rurales. Trabajando en las cuatro áreas Está enfocado el programa Derechos Indígenas, Medio Ambiente, Igualdad de Género y Gobernanza. Estos programas de intercambio proporcionan a los jóvenes las habilidades necesarias para tener éxitos en su vida, como el liderazgo, la comunicación, la igualdad de género, habilidades básicas para su vida, educación ambiental, entre otras. Con el programa YAI Virtual, el 2021, Estamos abarcando a nueve regiones políticas, 15 comunidades y 15 proyectos. Voy a mencionar las comunidades donde estamos desarrollando este programa virtual. En las tres eh, regiones naturales del Perú, la costa, la sierra y la selva. En la costa estamos trabajando en la comunidad de Villa Hermosa, en la ciudad de Casma. En, la, en Cantagallo, que es la comunidad de eh, indígenas eh, chipibos en Lima, en la ciudad de Tacna y en Huanchaco, Trujillo. En la sierra tenemos en Cusco tres proyectos en las comunidades de Quetcayó, Guaya, Guayacocha y Chincheros. En Ayacucho tenemos dos comunidades indígenas, Guamanguía, y Sarua. En Puno trabajamos en la comunidad de Juli y en la ciudad de Puno y en Huánuco en la comunidad de Villasol. Y en la selva 
trabajamos en tres comunidades, en Benajema, Pucalpa, San Francisco, también en Pucalpa, y Yamino, en Aguaitía. Bueno, queremos agradecer a todos los chicos jóvenes, a todos los chicos jóvenes peruanos y canadienses, agradecer al equipo, a Tina, Yona, a Vlad, que eh, trabajamos juntos y hemos desarrollado muy, muy bien este programa. A todo el equipo de la Oficina de Juventud Canadá Mundo, que siempre nos están apoyando. A todas las comunidades que nos facilitaron el trabajo para realizar este proyecto. A las autoridades locales, a las organizaciones que han apoyado para desarrollar las acciones que hemos emprendido en este nuevo, en estas nuevas iniciativas, en esta nueva experiencia que eh, para todos nosotros ha sido un reto, pero eh, los jóvenes han podido desarrollar sus proyectos. Eh, muchas gracias. Ahora vamos a ver los videos. También estoy muy ansioso de poder ver los videos, de poder ver los resultados de los jóvenes que han trabajado y que han desarrollado sus actividades en estas comunidades. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias, señor Jorge. And now, Pierre, please continue. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Lovely. So now we will be moving on to our first presentation. Yeah. And this presentation will be about projects on the coast. So projects in Lima, Cosma, Tacna, and Trujillo. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to uh, stop sharing my video and um, we will be introducing our first uh, group, um, which is the um, coastal region of Peru group. And uh, we will be doing our introduction. So hello, everyone. Welcome to the coast of Peru. We would like to thank Canada World Youth and Brigada de Voluntarios Bolivarianos del Perú for coming together to create Brayden. You're on mute. Sorry about that. Really sorry. Um, coming together to create the International Aboriginal Youth Internship. which we've all been working hard on for the past eight weeks in social projects. Which are all contributing to the international development of Peru. We are all working in teams of four in the locations of Casma, Trujillo, Lima, and Tacna. Let us show you what we have accomplished over these past two months on the coast of Peru. Hello, everybody. Luz and I make up the team situated in Lima, Peru. We are working with the organization named Colectivo Chipiwas Muralistas to help and execute our project called Strengthening the Digital Communication Skills and First Aid Knowledge of Colectivo Chipiwas Muralistas of Cantagallo. We were able to develop four activities that will help the community of Cantagallo. We have developed and facilitated a training that consists of managing Instagram and TikTok. In this way, we are preparing them to be more independent and knowledgeable with modern social which they can use as a tool to exhibit their art and culture. Cantacayo does have a strong community. 
The fire of 2016 caused a big detriment and community members are still recovering. We propose an activity called the Awareness Campaign, which is made up of our efforts in spreading the collective's products, murals, history, and knowledge in order to attract customers and outside help that would be beneficial to the group's ability to be self-sustaining. Unfortunately, on June 2nd, another fire broke out and affected 80 families. This fire caused the collective to prioritize their time into helping the community. We knew we had to adapt our project strategies in a way that will help the community. Thanks to the awareness campaign, a medical professional reached us to work with the collective, and as a result, we created a first aid training and an anti-parasitic campaign that we are working on in the next few days. Hello, this project is developed in the community of Casma and Villahermosa. It's called Education and Awareness in the Province of Casma, Angash 2021. The first activity was in the community of Villahermosa. First, the children received a presentation on the environment and then applied what they had learned through painting. The children used a presentation in colors, an activity that increases their capacity for concentration and expression. The second activity was also with the children. There was an exhibition about gender equality. Then, a papa the focus on this pillar was developed. And finally, what was learned was applied through painting. The third activity was a training focus on personal growth. It was really informative. The fourth and fifth activity were the installation of pipes to improvise water to the trees easily and the tree planting. This was one of the most awaited activities by the community. The health of children and residents made this activity a real success. The sixth activity was a training focus on mental health in time of pandemic with the participation of the community of Casma. It was beneficial for all. The seventh activity was a training on first aid for pets. We are aware that they also need care. This was the Education and Awareness Project in the city of Casma, Ancash 2021. Tacna is located in the southern part of Peru, bordering Chile in the south and Bolivia to the east. In this region, there is a desert climate. Tacna is mostly a commercial city with many immigrants, especially from the Puno region, gathering as a part of the Aymara community. Our project sought to create a connection amongst our communities nationally in order to raise awareness and trailblaze agency for change. We hope to create a larger global perspective for all of the people involved. Creating a learning circle amongst our communities in order to establish a space for sharing knowledge, to promote indigenous ways of knowing and being, and dialogue around global issues such as fostering a sustainable future, raising awareness about gender equity, and engaging our audience in governance. Students from both local universities of Takana, as well as the community and general public were able to participate in our project. We helped to raise awareness and global perspectives of social justice. Overall, we worked with more than 200 students and community members through various forums and learning circles carried out through the IAYI project. All of the people involved learned and participated in discussion around global issues and what positive change that we hope to make. Creating this experience for our audience was very empowering for us as hosts and as leaders. Through our project's Facebook page, we shared content such as videos, motivational quotes, festivities, posters, and relevant information from Peru and Canada in both languages, so that the information was available to anyone and everyone. We reached 7,439 people. In this journey, the Hakal Palo project has taught us as interns amazing leadership, presentation, video editing, and social skills. This experience was full of learning and an amazing journey for us both. Thank you, everybody. Hola, soy Betsabe, y junto con Stevie les vamos a presentar en este video las actividades que realizamos en el marco del programa IAGI International Aboriginal Youth Internships en Huanchaco, Trujillo, La Libertad, Perú. Veámoslo. Mis ojos y veo que sigo viviendo contigo, Perú. Emocionado, doy gracias al cielo por darme la vida con 
contigo Perú Eres muy grande Lo seguirá siendo Hello, my name is Stevie Sati and I'm going to be sharing with you our activities as a team. Will flow. The rainbow is here and prophecy tells us all generations will hear. Okay. One, two, three. Thank you, Stevie. Thank you, 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 thank on, on all of those videos, guys. Um, lovely. So uh, now I will be moving on to um, the presentation part of the coastal region. Um, and we just do have a slideshow presentation prepared. So uh, in this presentation, I will just go through some pictures and uh, some examples of, of the community development that went on that was not shown in the video. In Lima, um, they were strengthening the digital communications and first aid knowledge of the Colectivo Shipibas Muralistas of Cantagallo. His objective of, the objectives of this project was to strengthen the digital communication skills of Colectivo Shipibas Muralistas in order to draw cultural awareness, to promote an emergency readiness trained to group with, within a community, and to promote a healthier community. Here are some pictures of what the social media trained from Luz and the Colectivo's perspectives look like. <clears throat> there was uh, lots of posting on the IAYI pan fan page as a key awareness of, of the campaign activity. Um, even a mental health professional had reached out to them uh, shortly after um, these took place. On the, the these were posted on the Facebook page. Uh, with the help of the medical professional, we they were able to pardon me they were able to distribute anti parasitic medicine. This is a great thing to have, especially during these times. Some more pictures of the Colectivas Shipas, Shipibas Muralistas. So in Casma, um, the goal was uh, education and awareness in the province of Casma, in Cash 2021. The objective of this project was to educate and inform the, about the environment and gender equity through virtual training and face-to-face -face activities. These are some of the achievements that we had. We had many face-to-face -face virtual activities. Uh, we were able to capture the attention of children from four to 12 years of age and explaining important topics such as the environment, gender equality, and we were also able to work together with the residents and successfully carry out the tree planting. Together with many young professionals, they were able to carry out training sessions with the participation of the Casmena, Casmena population. So in these activities, the children were able to gain new perspectives about the environment and understand the world around them. Gender equity was also a topic that was discussed with the children as an achievement of the day. Wow. Um, they are also able to do some tree planting. The 
the community of Cosma was able to enrich their knowledge with these lovely trainings that they offered. Um, so uh, this is a Takna, uh, and this was uh, Carmen and I's project, um, and we, it was also known as the Hukopala project. Our goal was to create a connection amongst our communities in order to raise awareness and trailblaze agency for change. We hope to create gl larger global perspectives for everybody that was able to join us. Um, so as we uh, mentioned, um, we were able to work with more than 200 students and community members. We hosted very various forum, forums and learning circles that were carried out through the IAYI project. Um, our Facebook page had also re reached 7,439 people. And all of the people involved learned and participated in discussion around global issues and what positive change that we hope to make and what we're capable of. Creating this experience was, for our audience was very empowering for, for us as hosts and leaders. This experience was full of learning for us and an amazing journey for us both. So here is a picture of what our Facebook page looked like. Um, and uh, this is what uh, some of the post engagements and people that we reached. And we had uh, 201 likes and many followers. This is a couple pictures of um, our very first forum uh, with the university. Um, and uh, it was very engaging to see uh, many students uh, asking lots of questions about um, the initiatives that we had in Canada in terms of sustainability. Some more pictures of the students that we were able to work with. It was very engaging. Um, and I also had the chance to talk about some of the um, governance systems in Canada. Um, a forum with the university about Takna and challenge, Takna's problems and challenges in Peru in a global world class. There's some more pictures of us making some hearts. <laughs> it was a really great uh, class. They were very interested and in, um, had many questions. So it's very good. Good discussion. More pictures of uh, some of the forums that we did. Uh, we also talked about um, with a more advanced English class of uh, Peruvian speaking or Spanish speaking people. Um, we were able to uh, talk about some formal and informal sentences and um, Use, uh, use the uh, native English speaker uh, in order to help learn. And we also talked about many issues around treat, uh, treatment of water and also treatment of the environment. And some more pictures of our forums. Lovely. Uh, so this is our uh, last last presentation, and it is about Trujillo. And this is a, a revaluation of Moki Chimu millinery artisanal fishing in the district of Juan Choco, province of Trujillo in La Liberty Peru of 2021. Um, so the objectives of this project were to promote the care of cattails of the district of Juan Choco and also revalue the Moche Chimu millinery artisanal fishing in the district of Juan Choco. Some of the achievements of this project include promoting the environmental care in the Juan Choco Beach Resort and in Manitoba, Canada. They were managing the activities with the district municipality of Juan Choco, Chan Juan Choco and the public school of IECAT and Arnturan in Trujillo. They were able to teach virtual English to children between 12 and 13 years of age with the IECECAT at Trujillo Public High School, and also host some cleaning campaigns where over uh, where 100 volunteers participated in Juan Chaco and disseminated through social networks and television channels to thousands of people. 
2,357 people were reached by their IAYI Facebook page. Some pictures of some of the cleanups that happened in the campaigns. And we take care of our environment. Amazing. <clears throat> And some of the tree planting that happened. Diversity and learning. Libraries. And some of the English lessons that were carried out. It's important that the kids know the value of uh, plants and bees and their connection to the environment. This is amazing. Lovely. So thanks to the collaboration of these two amazing organizations, IAYI has connected us as youth leaders in the coastal region of Peru. And we have approximately worked with 900 people directly. Um, so that's such an amazing accomplishment. Thank you. Thank everybody uh, from the coastal region. Um, it was really great to work with you guys. Many people have uh, learned about these organizations and opportunities thanks to our IAYI project. Um, we've contributed to the growth within the global leader community. And even after the closure of our project, we will continue to share our passion and our knowledge with the community. Thank you, everybody. So, um, we will now uh, be moving on to our next project, which will be projects in the jungle. Lovely. So um, I'm going to begin um, by sharing the video that was shared with me and then um, we will continue on. Oh, sorry, I'm going to do an introduction of... Oh, great, no worries. Well, um, hello, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the jungle section. My name is Cecilia Caicho and I am from the beautiful city of Pucallpa. Within the jungle team, we have Hilmer who works with Benahema community, Arlette who works with the Amino community, and Hannah and Kristen who are our counterparts and work together with all of us. We want to share um, our experience and our projects in general, what we achieved and how we have worked in this last two months. We have had many challenges throughout our projects due to borrowed complications, including the pandemic, uh, the bad connection, the distance, but we also had great and productive results. We are very happy and proud to work with indigenous community because we know that it's the culture that represents us as jungle people. The revelation, the revelation of our tradition is something that we must work every day to improve and above all to help our culture not to be lost and continues to be valued for its importance and beauty. I want to highlight that the Shipibu culture represents us as the jungle of Peru and we have one of the more rich cultures all over the country. For example, today I'm dressed with a Shipibu embroidery dress that the artisans from San Francisco made themselves. And behind me, uh, I have a sheep people pattern of the ayahuasca flower. Next, uh, we will present a video of each of our projects carried out by the Peruvian Jungle Group. And I hope you like it very much. Mm. Can you present the video now, please? and I volunteer of the Bolivarian Volunteer Brigade of Peru and she is Hannah, my Canadian counterpart. We work on the project Revaluation of the Indigenous Cultures 
the rights and the importance of the environment in the native community of Yamina. These are our results. First, access to health for the indigenous community of the Yamina by a family planning campaign. The specialist spoke of the importance of family planning. He allowed to inform them about the different contraceptive methods, their uses and durability. He made it possible to resolve some doodles and identify why sometimes it has not worked. The obstetrician in short agreed to keep in contact to apply the methods that are requested in the community. The second result was access to health for indigenous community of the Yamin. Was coordinate a health oral campaign and the visit of the specialist who developed the demonstration and spoke about the importance of toothbrushing. The informative poster of Hannah White White, my Canadian counterpart, was used for this activity. En el marco del desarrollo de las actividades del plan de trabajo dentro de lo que es la mirada de voluntarios bolivarianos, queremos agradecer la participación de toda la comunidad nativa de Yamino. Como podemos ver, los niños y las madres de familia han hecho un trabajo exitoso el día de hoy. De esta manera venimos cumpliendo tanto los objetivos del proyecto IPI y nuestro plan de trabajo tanto de la brigada y de la policía. Agradecemos también la participación de mi contraparte en Canadá, Ana White White, que nos brindó la ayuda mediante estos carteles informativos para nuestra campaña cumplirse exitosamente en sus objetivos. The result is is focus in a guide exercise of the right vote electoral for the people indigenous in the community of Yamino in Awaitia. It was carried out uh, through the orientation campaign. The name of the campaign was Check Your Table, the Order and Place of Suffragate. For this activity, we use a on the website to write it down on the paper and deliver it. The result for was reevaluate culture and promotion in the tourists of the native community and the importance of a clean environment. In this objective, we focus in the cleaning and recovery campaign of the Guacamayo River. In this activity, the garbage was disposed of appropriate places. The awareness posters were places in the strategic places and the activity was also held in Winnipeg, in Winnipeg River in Canada. I am from Barron's River First Nation, Treaty Five Territory. I am currently residing in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, where I have been working alongside my counterpart Arlie in the community Peru. I hope everyone is enjoying the activities that are being conducted and I hope to visit one day. Ciao. Good afternoon everyone, my name is Cecilia Caicho and I am from Tucalpa. I 
have worked on this project together with my Canadian counterpart, Kristen Talapanek, who has contributed to the development of the activities and sessions. We are working together with the San Francisco Shipyard community, located one hour from the city of Pucallpa. The name of our project is Strengthening the Productive Capacities of Ceramic Artisans in the Community of San Francisco. The International Aboriginal Youth Internship 2020 project Ukayali region has started our first orientation for ship people ceramics from the native San Francisco community, where we talked about running a small business, how to start a business, and how to start a MIP. The engineer Victoria Coronado Ramirez from Produce Ukayali and Tu Empresa has provided the orientation for the potters, being clear and giving important information about the start and maintenance of a small company or business. Because as a final product of this project, the potters will be provided with a place to sell their products. Therefore, this orientation has been very important for them to have the necessary knowledge to properly manage the business. Our Canadian counterpart was present during the orientation, introducing herself to the potters and welcoming them to, to the start of this project. The end was successful because they returned in safety to their community thanks to the mobility conducted for them. They were also provided with lunch that they took home at the end of the orientation. On May 27, the International Aboriginal Youth Internship Ukayeli Region project, together with the sub-management of economic development of the provincial municipality of Coronel Portillo, have carried out a second training for Shipibo potters from the native community of San Francisco, being this a practical and dynamic orientation for the use and management of social media. The guest trainer of City of Ukayeli Ceramics, Luis Flores Gatayema, provided the training, teaching them how to create and promote their products through these important networks, and even more so in these difficult times. At the end of the meeting, the artisans returned to their community thanks to the mobility conducted for them. We are so happy for the learning that they are acquiring through this project, since that is its main purpose. On June 10, we carried out the third orientation of the EIE Pogalpa 2021 project, done together with the participation of Dirce Tour and the Provincial Municipality of Coronel Portillo, where we gave an orientation about cultural identity and customer service. Paula Linares from Dirce Tour and the craft coordinator Jorge Cubas were in charge of giving guidance to the potters and daughters of potters, also presenting future projects that are being carried out for them. After the orientations, we did a cultural exchange sharing the culture and tradition of the indigenous community of Kristen, who has also been working on the project from Canada. This exchange helped to value the living culture that the ship people of the San Francisco community have to learn more about the traditions of other indigenous communities. We appreciate the presence of each of them in this orientation. Our program carried out the last orientation of the project on Thursday, June 17, in which we dealt with the current packaging of ceramics. We started with a theoretical session and then with a practice session, where the participants simulated packaging and small pottery so that with the, that example, they would do the same with the products when they are asked to send them to countries or cities that require a long way. Luis Flores Katayama from the city of Cayali was in charge of giving the orientation and who later led a meeting together with the artisan on future projects that are being carried out in favor of the growth of the community. My name is Hilda Mazucuenticota. I'm the natural of the community of Nuevo Saposoa, Bajo Cayali. I'm participating in this event for para que fortalezca las capacidades de las personas y a mí también me interesa el tema de cerámica, por eso es que estoy participando, agradecemos a las instituciones que están apoyando a las, a las mujeres artesanas para que mejore su calidad y también que fortalezcan sus capacidades como vender, cómo ofrecer los productos son artesanas, ¿no? Y la municipalidad, uh, agradecemos a la municipalidad provincial de Coronel Portillo y también a Dirce Tour, que es este, parte del gobierno. Hello everyone, I hope you're having a nice afternoon. 
My name is Hilmar David Machidias. I am from Pucallpa, Peru, and I am part of the Shipibo Conibo people. And I'm doing this project with my Canadian counterpart, Hannah Whitewick, and Albert Salvador, who was the girl who introduced herself first. As you can see on the screen, the first activity took place on my 17th and 19th. Two talks were held thanks to the EIE program and the Barrio West organization. We gave a talk to the indigenous adolescents of the native community of Benajem, which is precisely where we are going to carry out our project. In these talks, they talk about the economy problems that COVID-19 has generated and what other effects it has generated, especially in the native communities. In fact, one of the strongest has been their source of income because they could no longer sell handicrafts because of the quarantine. began on my 25 and it consists of basic English classes for indigenous adolescents. The objective is to provide them with knowledge in a foreign language, which will help them a lot in the future. Here I work with my Canadian counterpart, Hannah. She drew a picture for the girls and helped me with the classes. <laughs> How are you? I did that. How is going on your classes? My classes are okay. Where, where are you? In my house. Thank you. In the morning, I take a shower. In the afternoon, I get dressed. In the, in the night, I wash my teeth. Thank you. It was a workshop given by Professor Luis Gonzalez in which he spoke to us about cultural identity, the importance of Shipibo customs, a revaluation of traditions, among others. This was done to make it clear to the teenagers the importance of the Shipibo Conibo culture. After the workshop, the teenagers were happy because they learned many things, such as their Shipibo names, legends of the jungle, and stories of their ancestors. No, con Hannah de quê? No, 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 for our TV, we focused on indigenous rights so that the adolescents would know how important it is to be indigenous Shipibo people. These talks were given by the teachers Soraya Castro and Ebony Diaz. At the end, the teenagers had a clear idea of why it was important to be Shipibo and how important it was to be proud of being Shipibo. Sometimes many teenagers are, are ashamed and um, that's wrong because in the culture there are many things that are incredible. Our last activity started last June 17. This workshop will be in charge of the teacher, Soraida Castro, who will teach the teenagers how to make embroidery and handicraft products so that they can have another source of income for their families. My counterpart Hannah will help us looking for methods and ways to sell products created by the teenagers abroad.
That was a lovely video. Thank you so much for creating that. Um, so now that we've finished with our projects of working in the jungle, we're going to be moving on to the presentation of oh, me, projects in the Andes. Actually, um, I do. I just wondered, um, does anybody have any questions from that presentation? I will be moving on. Um, so uh, now we will be uh, moving on to uh, our projects in the Andes. So this includes uh, Puno, uh, Ayacucho, Cusco, and uh, pardon me, and all, all everything, all of the above. Um, lovely. So, um, will uh, somebody be sharing their screen for this uh, presentation? Yes, I will be sharing my screen. Fantastic. Okay. Okay, everybody. So today, me and Alex, um, who work at in the Ayacucho region of Peru, we'll be presenting our project on digital marketing workshops. So I will now turn it over to Alex. Uh, okay, good afternoon. My name is Alex. I'm working with Erwin in this project about the digital marketing workshop in Erwin. Okay, uh, if you can scan the code uh, on this slide, you can see our activities in our, in our pages for, on Facebook. So continue being. Okay, uh, the several communities located in one of the Ayacucho province, call it uh, Victor Fajardo. The distance is between two or three hours of the travel. So you can observe different landscapes, natural landscapes. So continuing. Uh, this community is recognized for dedicating exclusively to the handicraft. Uh, also, they are being recognized by UNESCO and the Ministry of Culture. Uh, due to the the presence the presence of the COVID nineteen the pandemic, uh, meaning the entry of touristic tourist has not been allowed, and um, this generate economic losses in the community, uh, specifically uh, to feed their to feed their families, because most of them are in the artisan sector. Uh, this being uh, one of the problems during the first year of COVID, of the pandemic and during the confinement. So uh, they couldn't cope with, with the situation. So they decide to, so we decide to be on training the digital marketing and marketing strategies to support them and help them uh, how, how can they manage the situation and solve it? So, Erwin. Yeah, so now that Alex has kind of explained the context of our project, we will now move forward to talking about our activities. So as a part of the digital marketing workshops, our activities um, included uh, holding weekly workshops every Tuesday. 
Um, the key stakeholders involved in our projects were, as Alex explained, um, artisans from the Sarawak community. So um, these workshops often included interactive activities that gave the artisans more knowledge about how they could better market themselves on different platforms such as Instagram, Facebook, or even WhatsApp too. And um, since our workshop included people from um, who spoke Quechua, we decided to hold our workshops um, in both Quechua and Spanish. And um, yeah, so in order to conduct this project, we had to ask uh, the parents and the students for their permission to participate in the project. And um, we also had to contact the community school to um, begin different, like another part of our uh, digital marketing workshops, which included basic English classes for um, for youth in the community. And so now we will show you a video that um, is from a participant of the digital marketing workshops and their experiences and what they thought about the program. Yo hapa se tiene flor talía que yo pongo por mazón Jaime Cani Distrito de Salva, provincia de Víctor Fajardo, departamento Ayacucho. Yo hapa edad Nimi, 24 años, Ari Kai capacitación de marketing digital y ya allí enseñaban con imágenes página en tacama y mapas ni hay cuartos a noico rante con hay copa ari ya algunos talleres cascuna hay capacitación cascuna ni hay coña o avancita ni hay coro a y algunas personas ya rante con coña y chanaya ni hay co necesita y coma o apoyo más redes sociales ni me más da mirar el chino cupa y China yo hay cupa artesan artesano y co China yo hay cupa los hay co yo siren apa o claro ya está con ama y yo claro país con ama yo hay con una imago que es algo ya está más página pi y más pas los hay co a chiren apa entero Yeah, and so now we will talk more about the results and impacts of our project. So through the workshops um, that taught artisans on how to better market themselves on different platforms, um, our workshops often likely encourage the artisans to create their own pages and um, to make their work and their, um, their crafts more known to the wider community. Um, and also, in addition to the English classes that we also held in addition to the workshops, um, participants noted that they, that they felt that their English skills were improved and they became more interested in different scholarships, um, such as the Corona Beck Scholarship. And yeah, so as you can see, we have a different collection of different photos of the artisans who managed to um, set up their own pages and, um, and how they uh, better advertise their products so that they can get their work um, more out to a wider community. And yeah, um, we feel that through this project that uh, integrated a new generation um, into, uh, I guess, like the more modern way of how we can market our businesses and that is through social media. So um, yeah, so these digital marketing workshops were, um, were I yeah I think I just think that they were a good opportunity for the artisans to truly uh, market themselves and uh, better support their income and better support their families through having their work advertised. Um, Alex, did you want to mention anything else? Uh, no, I think we have uh, some slides. More. 
can you continue? Yeah. Oh, okay. So can you explain it? Yeah, so in addition to the English classes that we held in Sarwa, um, which is also in the Ayacucho region of Peru, we also had another um, other set of English classes that we were teaching on the side. Um, yeah, so these English classes were held um, also weekly. They were held for Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And they were 90-minute classes that taught uh, students on basic grammar in English, uh, basic grammar vocabulary in English. And um, our lessons, we tried to make them as interactive and intercultural as possible. So I, I had opportunity to share about my own culture and um, different ceremonies that happened in my community um, while also teaching English. And um, we also, I also um, included different types of activities such as the Kahoot. Some of you might be familiar with Kahoot. It's just this really neat way of um, questing students on their knowledge and it, it can become quite competitive, but we, um, yeah, so they were just really fun to hold over the two weeks. And yeah, we, we just overall enjoyed um, all of our activities that we held throughout this internship and um, we're glad to have seen our results and our impacts um, now that we are officially approaching the end of the program. So yeah, so here are just some um, different uh, like expressions in our language that say have a nice day. Um, Alex, did you want to read the top one in Quechua? Okay. It's the same. This is in Quechua. Can you say in your native language? Yeah, so in my language, um, just a little bit of knowledge is uh, how we say like have a nice day or like see you later. It is gidamatsun. That just means see you later. Or, like you can also use that when you say when you say bye to somebody. So it's, it's just a very general expression. Yeah, so that concludes our presentation. We hope you guys uh, enjoyed hearing about our different activities. And yeah, we'll now pass it on to um, the rest of the Andes region to present their projects. Thank you, guys. Um, so I'm going to introduce uh, the other three teams we have in the Andes part of Peru. We are um, Cusco. We have three projects in Cusco. We have Huanuco, we have one, and we have uh, another two in Puno. So I will start sharing my screen. So yeah, it's a pleasure for us to introduce our projects, the work, the hard work we have done for these past two months, and the work we are keep we keep doing for this last week. We are so proud. We are so excited about our results, our highlights and everything. So I'm going to start sharing the project in Cusco, Peru. Uh, the name is Kawan Kashani. It's a name in Quechua. It means I am with you. And um, I think the name is for the community especially because sometimes we know that we do not recognize them as they have to be recognized so yeah so for this project um Tiersa and i wanted to focus on um addressing gender violence because um our community is located in a very rural area without resources, and it's making their um, female population very vulnerable to violence. So that was our focus for the project. And we came up with some objectives that we wanted to focus on, including um, making visible the gender violence in our communities and bringing this to light. We wanted the woman to be able to recognize the cycles of violence and the signs of abusive behavior so that they would be able to understand um, what's happening if they ever find themselves in this situation. We also wanted to assemble um, different resources 
um, escape routes and safety plans, including um, safety access to safety homes. So the women had um, a path to take if they found themselves in this situation. And then we also want to provide support and let women know that they are not alone. And more specifically in Canada, we wanted to um, educate our audience on how colonization created the conditions for this violence against women, as well as promoting healing for our women who've experienced this type of violence. Um, so yeah, uh, we make a, a strategy to um, let people know what we were doing, let everyone, let also the people who were interested in this project know. Uh, so we deliver educational seminars to engage the public and assemble resources for vulnerable, vulnerable population. So I'm going to start sharing the project that we made in Cusco, Peru. So we uh, we really like um, like to, to name our our first activity as addressing gender violence in our communities. So both of our activities had that name, but in in different parts of the world. So here is for Que Cayo Cusco, Peru. Let's talk. The community of Kikayuk. Um, we talk with the psychologists of the municipality of Tarai to help us and carry out the talk, help us to introduce the topics we really want to talk at this important activity. So we had so much help for her and also for the municipality. So here you can see, we all, as every project, we have so many challenges. Um, probably this community um, was, is one of the most hardest community in the, in the city. So we had like, that was one challenge. Another one was that um, so many communities do not know really about the situation we are passing through talking about the COVID-19. So uh, the way all the participants mask and also antibacterial so we can um, have a really secure talk. So yeah, here you can see some pictures. There is a video or all of, of all of the women that have been on the talk. So yeah, I will share now the results. So yeah, this is was one of the highlights that we have in the project. Uh, we had like 42 women that attended the activity. Um, they at the community they are in total total 50 so the majority of them attend so yeah also we expand the visibility of the uh, of the municipality of Tarai because um, this week they also made the same activity in another community without we by their own so the municipality find um, a way to do on in all of their communities and I think it's one of the most because they are not noticing that gender violence is actually um, an important an important topic that they need to um, to talk about so and the last one and for me I think it's the most emotional and important was that one of the women approached us with a request for help as she is currently living in an environment of violence. So when we have the situation, probably we act with the help of the lawyer and the psychologist of the municipality of Tarai. But we noticed that if there is one woman that is passing through this, 
and the possibility that more women are passing this, this situation is uh, high. So yeah, for us was so important to talk about this and we are sure that uh, with the pass of the time, so many women will be um, brave to tell their story and find a way to, um, to pass through this situation, so yeah. So our um, gender uh, discussion on gender violence in Peru was such a good success. We wanted to extend it to Canada as well. So we decided to have a um, virtual discussion that we held over Zoom um, that focused on addressing violence that indigenous women in Canada face, um, specifically with the missing and murdered indigenous women crisis. So um, we had three amazing guest speakers for this discussion. I had asked um, Nancy Stevens. Um, she was a professor at my university in Indigenous Studies, and she's also had experience working in um, a woman's transitional home, specifically with victims of Indigenous female victims of sex trafficking. Um, so she was able to shed some light a little bit on um, history and how colonization really built the conditions for this crisis to be ongoing in Canada, um, as well as talking about her own experiences working in that field. And then we also had Olivia Todd, who was a social worker working at a, um, a woman's transitional home currently, and she was able to talk about how um, a non-Indigenous person can support Indigenous people and what being a true ally really means and she also explained the cycle of violence, which I think was very, very important for all women um, to be aware of so that they can recognize it if they ever find themselves in that situation. And then lastly, we also had Elder Dot Kennedy Bocage, who truly completed the night and made it a huge success. Um, Dot shared her own story of trauma and violence and how it was linked to residential schools and intergenerational trauma and how this violence has been passed down through her family from generations um, but then was able to end it on a positive note by saying that she has decided to stop the cycle of violence by healing herself so that she doesn't pass that abuse down to her own children and it was a very very moving discussion um, even though the topics that she addressed were so sensitive, um, she didn't make it hard for us to listen to. She used some humor here and there, and overall she just had such an, an emotional but uplifting message as well that it is possible for us to heal after we experience this violence. And so we have a couple of short little clips of her speaking. I don't know if the sound is on. You cannot listen it? No. Okay, I will, sorry about that. I will share my screen with the, with the sound. Sorry about that. I didn't notice it. Okay, let's just start again, sorry. Once you love yourself, you don't have any time to be jealous because you're unique. You are your own little snowflake. And always like remember that you are unique. You're very special. You came here for a reason. You have a purpose and you have gifts. You know, we all have gifts. So that's a little bit what I wanted to talk about to look at what happened to you and you learn. Those are lessons. You might 
You have to heal yourself first before you can help another human. You have to look at what happened to you and you learn. Those are lessons. They might be hard lessons, but you know what? You're a survivor. I sit here today and I'm grateful for the creator helping me. I work for the creator. He's my employer. He takes me where I need to go. He brought me here with you people today, you know, and I'm just happy that I was able to come uh, to be with you, to share uh, some of the, the horrific uh, violence that has occurred for multi-generationals and we have to stop it by stopping the cycle. So Dot being there was really one of the biggest highlights for me. Um, it was actually like a last minute thing because we had another guest speaker um, have to cancel the morning of the discussion. So I reached out to Dot very short notice um, asking if she would be able to speak, kind of not expecting that she would, but she replied that she can um, because the people come first. So that was very, I was very grateful that she was able to come and everyone else would seem to be very grateful to hear her story as well. Um, we had 26 participants. A lot of them were actually non-Indigenous people and they all indicated feeling like they had learned so much from this discussion and everyone was so moved by the end. I was tearing up because people were um, making these emotional like expressions of gratitude. Um, these are just some screenshots of the comments in the chat. One person says, um, it was an educational and eye-opening talk, and I'm very grateful to have been a part of it. And someone else says, um, thank you so much for hosting this discussion and creating this space. I feel so moved, touched, and so much more educated. So to me, I feel like it was a great success overall. I think we were able to educate people on the history of um, violence against Indigenous people and Indigenous women in this country and explain that this violence doesn't just come out of nowhere and it's not random, but that it really is a result of colonization and it's been passed through generations. But thankfully with um, Elder Dot, her sense of humor, she sort of ended it on a positive note as living proof that it does get better and it can get better for the women who go through this. And yeah, that was our project. So thank you guys for listening. Now we're going to pass through Wanuko. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, good afternoon. <laughs> Welcome to Wanuko, Peru. Um, today, Chanel and I were going to share with you about our project. It's named Econodux for a Sustainable Future. So um, Chanel will start. So Chanel, go ahead. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, I need permission to share my screen. Yeah, I still need permission to share my screen. Okay. Okay. So the community of Via Sol belongs to the colonial times because its territory and actual configuration does not have any runes or remains for training to the peer in cut period. Many of the families in the community have low incomes, which means it's hard to provide education for their children, especially the school supp supplies. Uh, sorry. Being that 
notebooks are mo the most expensive. Students don't have the opportunity to do homework, take notes, and study. Our project. Our project's objective is to contribute to the conservation and care of the environment by recycling sheets of paper in good conditions used for the production of notebooks for low-income students. We gathered a handful of community members to be a part of our journey in making this happen. So, Sorry, this is my first time using Canva. Yeah, I just. Cynthia, do you wanna share your screen instead? I'm having like yeah. a really hard time. Yeah, okay, no, no, no problem. I can share Thank you. Thank you, great. So we were in this part, right? Give me a second. Great, continue. So first we started by getting to know the community. We shared who we were, our objectives and goals as well as the project. So there's Cynthia in the community and I was on Zoom. And then here are the activities developed during the project. Okay, so first of all, we had workshops with community members. Uh, they were each Saturday to teach them how to produce the notebooks. We worked together. We made our teams to work with them, with youth people from the community and some parents from there. As you see here in the pictures, uh, we have some photos of the production of the Echo notebooks. Uh, we had these steps, we stacked 50 sheets of paper on top of each other. We added the covers that Chanel and I designed together and we made the holes on the papers and the covers and spread out everything together. And it's done. That's how we produce the notebooks each Saturday with the community members. Um, here we have some photos of the workshops with the adults and the kids working together. It was really fun, it was really good to see their enthusiasm and how they were interested in working about this and to make this project sustainable for the future. We also had um, some English classes with the children and teenagers from the community each Saturday. Me in the community and Chanel over Zoom, we had this challenge because they they didn't have a internet connection to have the classes by by Zoom during the week. So we did uh, it in a presential way, uh, me there and Chanel over Zoom, and that was really a good experience and amazing way to learn together. We told them about 12 different topics, um, like the alphabet, the colors, the numbers, the family members, articles, and much more. And they were really enthusiastic and hoping Hello. always for more classes, which was really good to see. Huh? And we also formed basic English classes for people uh, from Wanuko or for all the people that wanted to participate. In this case, they were uh, over Zoom. We made two groups, for one from aged from 5 to 14 years old on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and the other group was for 15 and 18 plus years old on Wednesdays and Fridays. So we learned a lot and we improved our, our teaching skills, to be honest. Um, okay, and Chanel, you can go ahead. So we had talks with the school about recycling, how to recycle and what to recycle, and about our project, Eco Notebooks for a Sustainable Future. We shared information about the project, taught the students how to create notebooks themselves with recycled material. So when we're not there, they'll be able to have their own notebooks and make them still. We shared a talk about equality rights with the participation of the youth. 
We learned about the importance of this topic and how to utilize it in our society. And then here are some achievements and impacts of the project. The, the production of eco notebooks is done with recycled paper in good conditions from old notebooks. The eco notebooks were produced by co-working with community members. A sustainable project because the community members know how to make them on their own, especially the youth. 56 notebooks were produced so far. The redu reduction, sorry, reduction of paper waste about was about 10 kilograms have been saved so far. Around 90 students participated in the talks about the importance of recycling and caring about the environment. 31 people participated on the talks about equality rights. Yeah, and we also gained an improved teamwork skills, integration of the youth. They got to know each other better and gain new peers. Many students from the community now have notebooks for free and know how to produce them. That was the principal objectives of our project. Also, low-income families saving money from buying notebooks and the community members improved improve their knowledge about caring the environment with sustainable alternatives. And also students from the community improve their English skills and feel interested to learn more and hope to gain more opportunities in the future. And now we have a short video and that we recorded in the community. So I'm gonna share it with, with you so you can see them. Um, okay, where is it? I got this. Okay. Nos pareció muy divertido. Sí, porque sí. podemos aprender inglés. Qué bueno. ¿Y a ti qué, qué es lo que más te gustó? A mí aprender el abecedario y los miembros de la familia. Muy bien, ¿y a, a ti? A mí me gustó aprender, aprender este, más los números y jugar dos juegos. Que es ok, muchas gracias. Ahora que hemos hecho estos trabajos, yo sé que le va a servir a varias familias, ¿no? Y más bien, gracias, ¿no? Por este proyecto. Y yo les pediría hacer continuando y trabajando, no solo quizás con los cuadernos, quizás con otras cosas más también que hay en nuestra comunidad. Y no estar de esa manera, no estamos este, contaminando nuestro medio ambiente, ¿no? Y eso es para el bien de nuestra población y ver también este, ayuda para los adolescentes, para los niños, ya que es muy importante, ¿no? Y también ellos desarrollan sus habilidades, sus emociones en ellos. Y también ellos aprenden también a reciclar y a reutilizar. ¿no? Muchas gracias. Y una vez más, y que no sea la última. Hay que seguir trabajando con este proyecto. Gracias. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, for, thank you. Thank you. Um, that's our project about. Thank you. Lovely. Um, no, Betsabe, I believe we can introduce uh, introduce our next speaker for our closing words. Yes, okay. No, it's I think it's Puno turn. Yes. 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 We Puno. are going to introduce the last part. So sorry about that. Um, our our forum um, it, it it was was supposed to be scheduled to end um, in 
the next a few minutes. Um, is it okay that we go over everybody? I think I'm sure I'm okay with that. Okay, oh, lovely. We can continue. Okay, thank you. So, can you let me to share my screen, please? Well, we can't hear you. Ahora me escuchan? Yes, better. Thank you. Uh, did you want me to share my screen, Hugo? Uh, let me, sh is it okay if I share my screen? Yeah, I have it here. Thank you. Um, so I worked on two different projects and one was with Hugo and another one was with Floor. Um, so I think Hugo is going to introduce this one and then I'll talk about, about the one uh, I did with Floor. Okay, thank you. Yes. The name of our project is Improvement Commercial Opportunities, Technology of Formation and Communication for Artisan Food. So we have some objectives that we were working in this project. So first object we have studies about the importance to use the technology of the information communication artisan whole and also to encourage the technology for commercialization of craft products. And also give the artisans to use parents of technology and uh, also design a visual for the artists of Huli and not a catalog. So our strategy is in the use of social media to uh, workshop practice TV to strengthen them Compared in this um, globalized world, technology has um, advanced a lot. Uh, thanks to this, the process of artisans can be seen in different parts of the world and so why not Next. Improvement of commercial opportunity that technology information and communication on the artisan aspiration of holy. So in the absence of tourism, since the activity of craft is also very hard affected, so it's necessary to apply digital marketing strategies so that they can sell they brought through the um, media, such as uh, Facebook, 
Instagram and uh, virtually store. Uh, highlight. So around 18 are since uh, participating in program. So, so also in this workshops and meetings related to the technology. In a certain way, they all uh, showed interest in learning and continue, continue to, to improve. Our activities. So, as I said, many activities were carried out, such as uh, training works related to the career of use to technology, like uh, also the importance of brand for marketing. You know, all these activities will carry out in coordination with counterpart here so um, I did workshops and trainings and the practice part of, of and the practice part they did clearly like what they showed how the how indigenous people of Canada get their look to the fake and Instagram. Our results. So our results uh, down the layer about WhatsApp and Facebook to communicate with the farmers. Um, and so very quickly, in fact, this was a challenge also to reach the artisan in a very simple way, uh, let them under the easy and so be quick. You know. And also the artisans took a uh, photo of their product. So it was uh, released uh, with the help of uh, photographer. So all the products were photographed made a catalog. And so we had a training how they should take the photos about products. And also uh, they are created a logo and virtual level for the store of their products. So uh, we especially for sure design their law as we can say as we can there are designed as holy the logo for the artisans of holy so um this law will be by artisans uh, for for commerciality So every time we had some uh, some something. Uh, so when we have uh, some meetings or workshop, we always had our lunch. This is the custom of uh, the Andean people to gather all the needs of the people and share community. So I think that. Uh, Project fully, and so now I invite you to, yes, yes. Uh, to talk about one of the Gracias, yes. Um, they were both really amazing experiences, and I think from both ways, it, there was just a lot of gratitude and appreciation for one another. Um, from both communities and, and our counterparts. So that's one thing I really appreciated during this, um, this pro these projects together. Uh, so the other project I was working on was with Floor and it was capacity building in the area of gender equality and the environment in the rural community of Swan, Swan Juan, the 
Kayana and Pokegola, or Pokegola um, district in this province of Puno. Uh, so the objectives were to promote learning strategies in students as an alternative to virtual education and carry out activities that reinforce the promotion of caring for the environment. Uh, so we did different workshops. One was an animation workshop. Uh, the youth were able to uh, get together and make their own animation videos. We also did an English class. So it was just basic English um, that we got to learn together and uh, reading promotion day. So to encourage them to read. Um, we did training on reforestation, so promoting active participation of the community to take care of the environment and generate a sense of responsibility to take care of the plants and the forestation lo located in the main square of the community. So there was a workshop and I also provided a video um, of our forest here in Canada and talking about some of our um, native medicines in Canada. Um, and then our, our maple leaf here and some of our uh, trees that grow all year round or stay all year round. Um, and then we also had our English class. So encouraging the children to learn basic our English with basic sessions um, with the counterparts and also providing cultural exchanges within English. So teaching um, a little bit of providing some of our teachings and um, teaching them about different First Nations communities in Canada. So that's it for Puno. Gracias. Miigwech. Thank you, Tia. Thank you, Hugo. Thank you, Puna team. So uh, now I will, sorry, Pierre, I will continue. Uh, with the last words of uh, Pomaleke. So I will share the PPT now. Hola, buenas tardes. ¿Me escucha? Sí. Buenas tardes. Eh, muy buenas tardes a todos. Estoy tan agradecido por la invitación que me realizaron. Eh, también agradezco a la Brigada de Voluntarios Bolivarianos y a Canadá World You. Eh, me siento entusiasmado por ser partícipe en el cierre del evento. Eh, y cómo se llama. Mi nombre es Miguel Ángel Pomaleque Piaca. Eh, fui parte de, de un programa realizada en Canadá en el 2014, en Canadá World You. Y soy un joven indígena, soy de Yacucho. Hoy por el motivo de trabajo me encuentro por las Amazonas del Perú, que es Puliquitos. Y también agradecerles a todos los expositores, a todos por las lindas experiencias que han contado, que se sienten eh, muy alegres por haber trabajado en las comunidades indígenas, ya que son muy olvidados, tal vez por el tema de que son muy alejados por parte de la geografía y mucho también es por parte del Estado que tal vez haya discriminado hacia un sector y no lo toma mucha importancia. Y hoy en día las comunidades indígenas salen a reclamar esos derechos tal vez que han sido vulnerados por parte del Estado. Y yo al escuchar todo el trabajo y todo el proyecto que han venido realizando me siento muy alegre porque hoy en día las comunidades indígenas tratan de eso, de buscar, de que los conozcan, de que ellos también sean parte de, de, del Estado y que el Estado también les reconozca y, digan y que respeten sus derechos. Eh, muchos de ellos han sido vulnerados porque con la naturaleza, la tierra, el fuego, el aire, es parte de lo que nosotros vivimos y es parte de lo que a nosotros nos ha dado eh, el sentir vivir, el buen vivir, de que cada año se ha venido buscando. Sé que hoy se celebra el Día del, de Todos los Pueblos Indígenas, pero acá también en el Perú se celebra el, lo que es el nuevo año andino, que cada año vemos el nuevo amanecer, el fruto de cada, de cada nación, de cada país, de cada 
hogar donde han encontrado, tal vez no hayan encontrado tal vez la paz, pero hoy en día muchos de ellos buscan la paz. Por eso en tema de las comunidades indígenas ha sido un, un trabajo muy, muy dejado por parte del Estado. Y agradezco a Canadá World You y a la Brigada porque han empezado a trabajar hoy en día. Y eso a mí también me entusiasma porque yo también fui parte del proyecto, del programa en Canadá World You en, en Nunavut, donde vi también una comunidad indígena eh, donde participé en cambiar y conocer las realidades. Creo que así nosotros conocemos las realidades de, de nuestro querido país y tanto en Canadá, tanto en el Perú, porque si no llegamos, no podemos decir cómo es ese lugar y cómo es la acojada, cómo nos acogen la gente, cómo ellos trabajan y salen adelante. Sé que el año pasado, con todo esto de la pandemia, nos ha afectado a muchos, muchas comunidades indígenas, y son ellos los más olvidados hoy en día, no los toman muy importante, o sea, el parte del Estado, pero les dejan a un lado, porque en el sector salud, sector educación, son los más vulnerados. Hoy en día no muchos de ellos no reciben tal vez educación, no reciben parte de lo que es de, de la salud y, y ellos siguen combatiendo el tema de la pandemia. Y hoy vemos, como se llama, que los jóvenes hoy en día mando también el, el pilar y tratan de recuperar, como se llama, lo que los ancestros les han dejado, porque con el tema de esto de la discriminación, el tema de que sean vulnerables, ellos han dejado de practicar, pero hoy ellos han decidido en practicar porque lo mejor de, de la cultura, de sus identidades, estén ahí. Y es por eso que doy como clausurado también al evento, que ha sido muy fructífero para todos nosotros, tanto para Canadá, tanto para Perú. Y pido también que este programa se siga fortaleciendo, se siga abriendo más espacios para que muchos jóvenes, tanto de Canadá, de Perú, pudieran conocer más de sus culturas, conocer más de sus costumbres. Porque así yo aprendí también de, de Canadá, conocí más su, sus costumbres, la parte de la vivencia, porque eso me enseñó a ser más eh, persona, me enseñó a ser más profesional. Y hoy en día me... Me brindo eso, ese apoyo del voluntariado del que yo hice en Canadá y acá en el Perú. Y estoy muy agradecido a todos ustedes, eh, tanto a Canadá World You y a la Brigada de Voluntarios Bolivarianos. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias, Miguel. Thank you so much, Miguel. So now, uh, Pearl, please. Okay, lovely. Um, so this comes to the closing of our International Indigenous Community Development Forum. Um, thank you all so much for attending. I, we really appreciate your participation and also the, um, uh, all the love that you've also shared in the, the chat as well. I can see that some people um, have, have really enjoyed what we've had to share here today. So I really appreciate everybody coming together in order to create this. It was really great working with you all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pearl. But before before saying goodbye, please, could you turn on your cameras for the final photo, please? <laughs> um, vayamos prendiendo, por favor, la, nuestras cámaras para poder tomarnos una foto final de recuerdo. Eh, falta Carlos Martín, eh, Carlos eh, Villalart, eh, De Omila, Chanel Hope, Diana, Patti, Joseph, Angélica, Aida, Roller, quienes, esperamos un segundo, falta Joseph, Patti, Yanela. Ok, so. One, a la cuenta de tres, a la cuenta de tres, one, two, three, smile. Oh, wait, sorry. Okay, another one. Please wait. Uh, 
Robert, could you take the photos, please? <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, another one, please. The second one, the second group. One, two, three. Smile, please. Okay, another one, the last group. One, two, three. A big smile. Okay, thank you so much for being here. Thank you a lot, uh, team. So thank you so much again. <laughs> Muchas gracias. Thank you. Have a, have a lovely day. Bye. Bye. Muchísimas gracias.